here's an example from Greece between 2007 and 2016. You cannot put your house on your back and walk away with it. So governments tax you because that's how they generate their income. Well, let's see how gold and that taxation works because this is both in 2010. And you can see that over the long term, gold protects your ability, ensures your ability to pay your property taxes. Even during the depression, if you owned the property outright and you couldn't pay your property taxes, you lost it. But let's say you didn't own the property outright. You've got a mortgage on it. Here's a great example from Mexico and in 1995 during their currency crisis. The Mexico mortgage market boom, bust and bailout, determinants of borrower default and loan restructure after the 1995 currency crisis. First of all, the accord for the assistance of the banking system. The ADA program was the first in a series of government and individual bank relief programs, not public relief programs, bank relief programs like we saw in 2008. Of course, the program was voluntary, but it offered borrowers an interest rate subsidy if they signed new loan contracts and switched from peso-denominated loans to loans denominated in an inflation-adjusted accounting unit called units of investment. That's just you, that's just a new currency that they put together to keep pace with inflation, to keep the banks whole. But hey, they tricked you into it. They nudged you into it with those subsidies for interest for a minute. UDIs were created as an alternative currency for accounting purposes to allow financial products such as mortgage to maintain a constant purchasing power value in the face of inflation. In other words, your mortgage payments keep going up on a monthly basis. We'll talk more about that in a second. The value of the UDI is published daily and grows in tandem with inflation. Who does that help? It helps the bank. But while the UDI indexing of non-financial contracts, such as wage agreements and commercial contracts, that wasn't authorized. So your wages stayed stagnant, but your mortgage costs increased. What we're going to do is we're going to position into gold to pay off that mortgage, boom, just like that, when they do that initial reset so that that is simply not an issue for you. But there will be a lot of real estate that comes on the market. Now, let me show you a little bit more because this is the peso overnight devaluation. And this also reflects against the U.S. dollar, but against gold. This is what it looks like. First of all, government intervention. So that's the lowest they'd allow the peso to go against other currencies. And there's the upper band intervention. So they they allowed it to trade between a range until they decided that it was too expensive or they lost control either way. And you can see what happened. If you have gold, when they do that overnight revaluation, this is what happens to gold. You take those gains in terms of fiat, you pay that off before they can screw around with your mortgage. At the time of restructure, most borrowers were faced with signing new loan contracts for amounts significantly higher than their original loans. Some, in fact, for amounts greater than the value of their homes because the value of their homes are plunging during this period of time. And yet, in order to stay in them, they had to get new loans at significantly higher. Borrowers were reluctant to restructure into UDIs because payments would increase on a monthly basis in nominal terms. We want to avoid that by holding gold. You don't want to be in that circumstance. Many loans fell into delinquency subsequent to restructuring. Some claim that because payments rose with inflation under the restructure contracts, Borrowers became delinquent again when they were unable to keep up with payment increases because their wages didn't increase. Duh! So you want to be in a position that that is simply not an issue for you. And that's what the strategy that we're executing does. Gold holds its value in overnight devaluations. So you grab those as much as you need. Right now, maybe that's going to take 20 ounces of gold. When this occurs, when that overnight...
overnight restructuring occurs, maybe it's going to take one ounce. We will let you know when, I'm going to let you know when I do it for myself because that's why I have a mortgage. I want to execute this strategy and so do you. The very inflation which had left many destitute had provided a handsome dividend to those who paid off their mortgages with worthless currency. This is not something new. This is not rocket science. Let's go to Germany for that example. That was what happened with gold value of, of one gold mark in paper marks, right? So do you see how that happens? There's that cup formation. Then you got that breakout. We've already had that breakout. That was 1921. What do you want to be holding? Marks? No, no, no. That's not how you're going to pay off that mortgage. You're going to do it with gold. But most people will still be sitting with dollars when this occurs. That's what creates the opportunity. And you and I get to take advantage of that because gold protects against hyperinflation. Even the biggest bank in the world, Bank for International Settlements, admits that. So let's look at the landlord side of this in Venezuela because what they do is rent capping. Oh, nope, you can't charge more than that. Well, your bills as a landlord continue. And this just goes back to 2017, not that long ago. Thousands of Venezuelan landlords who in the past struggled to become homeowners who later rented see their assets depreciated even more after the implementation of the new monetary cone, which eliminated five zeros, boom, overnight devaluation, eliminated five zeros to the Bolivar and therefore has made it unfeasible for tenants to pay rent leases that were already ridiculous because of the government's control and the context of hyperinflation. They create this mess with all of this money printing and then they take advantage of it and they say, oh, who could help that? Who could know? Well, they know what they're doing because quite frankly, you can live without paying your rent and hey, the government can just stop that as we saw in 2020. But buying food takes precedence. You have to eat and food becomes the single biggest issue for most people during these transitions. But one of the most important issues of the stabilization of a hyperinflation is the revaluation where they take this that's used in one area of the global economy, local for barter, and they revalue it against this, which is used in every single sector of the global economy. So it has the broadest base of functionality, the broadest base of buyer. Yeah, they have to revalue. They're trying to get current. They're trying to get confidence back. But this is what happened to real estate in Germany, right? So here it was at the start, 1908, and it and there just like we've seen the inflated prices in real estate now, we saw that too into 2020, 1922. This is an index, real estate index. By 1924, it went down to 70, from 450 to 70. That, my friends, is an 84.5% decline in real estate valuations at the same time that gold is going through the roof. So at the beginning of this, you had in 1919, 200 marks, golden marks were only 170 marks per ounce. So that's 1.17 ounces. By the end of 22, at 450 marks, it was 396,000 marks per ounce. Do you see how that overnight revaluation works? So it buys 1,031 times the index. That's why, on average, 25 ounces of gold buys an entire city block, buildings and all. Can you see this opportunity? Because that's what we're positioning for in the strategy, to make sure that you can maintain what you already own and protect it, but also to put you in position to take advantage. Now, my good friend, Robert Kiyosaki and Mike Maloney, 
they did a book on gold and silver. At this time, an entire city block of commercial real estate in downtown Berlin could be purchased for just 25 ounces of gold. Those who held their wealth in the form of gold watched their purchasing power increase exponentially as they became wealthy by comparison. Why? Because they held their purchasing power. That's what gold does. That's, in my opinion, the single most important function of gold over time. During financial upheaval, a bubble popping, a market crash, a depression, or a currency crisis, crisis such as this one, wealth is not destroyed. It is merely transferred. So why not just have that wealth transfer your way? 